What the? Well, that's new. Welcome back, guys. Mike here with Things You Might Like, and we have a ton of stuff to talk about in regards to the new Desert Map 1.0 test server that has been going on for the last couple days. And I'm going to do my best to get into the most notable items, them being the vehicles, the new weapons, the different terrain, and just how the map feels. But before I get into that, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to all of those that joined me on the live stream. There was just a few of you, but we had a good time. We had some really close games and it was fun to be able to connect with you guys, my subscribers, and be able to get to know you a little better and be able to spend that time with you. I plan on doing a lot more of those live streams in the future. So if you wanna get notifications for that, make sure you hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. And if you like this video today, be sure to like it and subscribe. We are a rapidly growing community. We are hitting a thousand subscribers real soon and I have something special coming up just for that. So now that that's out of the way, again, thank you so much. Let's jump right into all of the crazy different elements that we have to cover. Let's start off with the vehicles. Now, all the regular vehicles like the bike that I'm riding here and the buggy, they got a new paint job, which I think was a nice touch. But the most notable items are going to be this truck and then, of course, the VW bus. Everything that was leaked through the different data mines was absolutely correct. This truck comes in several different flavors, this one being the most off-roady looking one. Um, it does have a camper in the back. The truck without the camper in the back allows you to still seat people in the bed of the truck, which I think is neat. It does great off-road. It does not go very fast, but it sounds great and it works great. Kind of cool to look at inside and a nice addition to the vehicle to take the U as its place, which is absent from this map. Then we have the VW bus, which comes in one color that I was able to find while I played. And it is a little bit interesting. I'm, I'm not sure where it fits. I guess it's a great last resort vehicle. The huge windows do work well for cover um, if you're using the vehicle as cover and you're trying to shoot through the windows but everything that's big that you can shoot through that means someone can reach you as well there are six seating positions in the van which i thought was interesting considering there are 10 possible seating positions in the player menu so we'll see what they do with that in the future it goes real slow sounds like a vw bus but it looks pretty cool and adds just a tiny hint of flair to the game now let's get to the weapon side of things. The first one I want to talk about is the Winchester 94. It is a 45 caliber lever action rifle that holds eight rounds. Something worth noting is because it's lever action, there is a delay between each shot. And while it holds extremely steady when you shoot it, uh, one shot after another, if you don't move the cursor at all, you know, it shoots almost exactly in the same spot. But I'm not sure where this gun really falls in line. The first time I took into a battle, I immediately forgot that it was lever action and the delay between the shots got me killed, but it doesn't have any attachments whatsoever. So it's not amazing for long range, but because the slow rate of fire, it's not all that great for short range either. If I'm very close range with someone, I would rather take a shotgun. If it's longer range, I'd rather take an ump to be honest, because I can at least put a scope on that. So I'm not sure quite where it falls into place. I hope they play around with it and find a place for it because I think it's a really cool addition. It's nice to have that variety, but in the meantime, I just wasn't a huge fan. You know, I was able to shoot a guy in a car driving pretty quick. I had to lead him a lot. I got what I assume is a headshot since he was driving the car and it just didn't really do anything. And I proceeded to die during that exchange. So we'll have to see what they decide to do with the weapon. But for now, it was definitely not my weapon of choice. Next, we have the 45 revolver. It is a six shooter that allows you to speed reload it. So you load all six rounds at once. And it is a pretty slow fire rate I came to find. And when you fire in third person, the recoil is not bad at all. But when you switch over to first person, it's really rough on the recoil. Again, I'm not entirely sure where this pistol really falls into place. I didn't get a chance to really use it in action. So, you know, maybe it does a lot more damage than I thought. But the slow rate of fire is what really throws me off. I just can't spam it as quickly as I would hope that I would. But the quick reload is nice. So again, another nice addition. And we'll see what they do as far as fine tuning this weapon for the future. And the last big addition is going to be the sawed off shotgun. There was speculation on whether or not it would actually be in the pistol slot because it was found in the pistol folder during the data mine. And indeed, that again was correct. The sawed off shotgun goes in the pistol slot and it holds two rounds. It's extremely slow to reload. 
I had really high hopes for it because it has almost zero recoil and you can get the two shots off very quickly. But when I actually used it in combat, I was really disappointed with what I found. This guy came up on me, he jumped out of his car, and I got a great shot off on him, which I thought was, you know, a solid shot to the chest, something that a regular shotgun probably would have killed him with, since it looked like he had level one armor. But then in reviewing the kill cam after he proceeded to kill me, you can see that it barely did any damage to him. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. But it's nice to see that they are at least giving the pistol slot some attention because it has been extremely neglected, but with the new pistol weapons and the fact that there's the new penetration, the water penetration, which makes pistols a lot more valuable during those times because they penetrate the water a whole lot better than high powered rifles do. Anyway, it's just nice to see that they're giving pistols the attention that they deserve. So it's not just a wasteful slot and we can actually utilize another weapon as we navigate the game. So those were the big additions, things that were brand new, other than the map itself, which is very interesting. I personally love it. You start off at the prison, which is actually a part of the map, so you can run out of the prison and kind of run into the map, which I think is an interesting way to play it. And the map is humongous. People say, yeah, it's the same as Erangal 8x8, but it, it's bigger, guys. There's way more land on it compared to Erangal because Erangal is surrounded by water. And even though it's obviously bigger because of just how much land there is, it doesn't feel like it's even the same scale as Erangal to me. I'm sure I'm wrong about this, but it feels like when you're running one kilometer, it is a lot longer than one kilometer at Erangal. So I, I'm sure I'm wrong about that. But with that size of the map, that massive, huge, very dynamic map there is so much texture and detail and new ways to play compared to Erangal because there is pretty much no shrubbery on most parts of the map which I wonder how that affects the foliage setting and how that might affect your FPS something that maybe I'll do a test of in the future but because there's not a lot of foliage they had to compensate for cover with the actual terrain itself so there is a lot of undulations and a lot of crevices and hills and places where people can just pop out of nowhere, which, if you play it right, is very advantageous, especially for third person. It makes third person, if you know how to play it, I think maybe a little bit easier, but first person makes it very interesting because you just don't know where someone could be hiding. On top of that, the shrubbery is very different with these palm trees. A lot of the natural landscape that you use for cover is actually kind of tapered in at the bottom, so I got several kills purely by aiming at people's feet because they thought they were covered, but their feet were actually exposed. This means that if you choose these things for hiding, you have to really expose yourself to be able to peek. So that's a new style of gameplay that I thought was a very interesting addition that makes this map a little bit more unique. Also, I wanted to note that I was right about the huge towers. Well, mostly right. On the really, really big towers, not every single room is accessible because that's just way, way too many spots to loot but it's a lot more than I thought there'd be. There are some buildings that have four or five stories that you actually can navigate and loot every single floor, but there are a lot that have several, several floors that are blocked off. So there's something worth noting to add to the sheer scale of this map. And now I could go on and on about all the crazy things about this map, and if you haven't already gotten out and played it, the test servers are still up as of this video. I don't know how much longer they're going to be up, but it's going to be released on the 20th anyway. So get out there as soon as you can and start playing this map because it is worth it. I'm loving the UI changes. I'm loving the frames and how steady it is, minus the fact that it occasionally does crash. But that's more of the test server side rather than the game itself, I'm hoping. Um, so guys, get out and play it. This was a fantastic addition. It's coming at the right time. And I think they're doing all the right moves with this part of the game. So I hope this gave you at least a good enough rundown that if you didn't get a chance to play this desert map, that you at least have a feel of what it's like. So in regards to my live streams, that will not be taking place of my videos. I'm still going to be doing two videos a week and the live stream will be at least once or twice a week on top of those videos. And I'm just gonna upload them and try to point out maybe some interesting parts of the video so you guys can just hop around and kinda check that out. But I hope you can join me on the next live stream. Again, that was a lot of fun and we were able to talk a lot. We talked about some equipment and we talked about specs and we talked a lot about reshade. I will be doing a desert map reshade video so stay tuned for that. And if you're not subscribed and you want to check that out, again, hit that subscribe button. Hopefully you enjoyed this today. Thanks for stopping in, guys. This is Mike with Things You Might Like, and I will see you all with my next cool thing.